Mr. President, earlier this month, Utah lost one of our very finest, former Congressman Jim Hansen, a great leader, an amazing husband and father, and a fantastic, loyal friend. It's my privilege to honor his life today. Jim's first and most important rule in getting involved in politics was get involved because you have a cause and not simply because you want a job. In fact, his own motivation to first run for local office was with the objective of improving the local water system in his small town of Farmington, Utah, where the water supply was sometimes dirty and sometimes even non-existent. Though he had lived in Farmington, Utah for only a few years at the time, he was elected to the Farmington City Council in 1961, and he oversaw the installation of a new utility system. No small feat for that small town. And that water system allowed the community to grow and to flourish, just as it continues to do to this very day. Thus began Jim Hansen's 42 years in public service. After serving on the city council in Farmington for 12 years, Jim was elected to the Utah House of Representatives in 1973. He worked hard and eventually rose to the position of Speaker of the House during his final term. It was then that Jim launched his congressional bid for Utah's first congressional district, defeating five-term incumbent Gunn McKay in 1980. He got right to work representing the citizens of Utah, this time at the federal level. Among his proudest accomplishments were serving on the Base Realignment and Closure Commission and on the House Natural Resources Committee. Jim took great pride in helping save Hale Air Force Base in northern Utah from closure. Whenever he'd hear a jet roaring overhead at a decibel level loud enough to break the windows, he would tell his children, predictably, that's just the sound of freedom. You're lucky to hear and live under that sound every day. A great lover of the outdoors, so too was he proud of saving the environment from environmentalists, as he would say. Jim often sparred with environmentalists about wilderness issues and championed multiple use policies for public lands, though he was also the sponsor of the 1984 Utah Wilderness Act, which designated wilderness in Utah forest areas. Ever a staunch Republican and always a man of humor, Jim Hansen delighted in reciting his own version of Proverbs 22 Verse 6, he'd say, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will vote Republican. But Jim was always known for being able to work across the aisle and was well respected by his Democratic colleagues. He served as the chairman of the House Ethics Committee during a partisan crisis among House members over the investigation into former Speaker Newt Gingrich. And both parties at the time trusted him to handle any investigations fairly and impartially. For 22 years, he tirelessly served the first district of Utah in the U.S. House of Representatives, becoming Utah's longest serving congressman. After he announced his retirement in 2002, still at the top of his game, he said in an interview that he wanted to leave behind a legacy of hard work. And indeed, Jim Hansen did. Not only was Jim hardworking, but he was also immensely generous. He did not keep his success for himself, but for years offered mentorship to anyone seeking to navigate the political waters. I myself was lucky enough to call Jim a mentor and a friend. When I first considered running for the Senate in 2010, he met with me at length and gave me a whole lot of really helpful advice and encouragement. Even though I was a newcomer with very, very little chance of success, he couldn't have been more generous with his time, with his wisdom, or with his words of support. When I announced my candidacy, he stood by me and offered his full endorsement. And so many others were also blessed by Jim's friendship and his loyalty. A lesser known story that illustrates the quality of Jim's character involves his longtime friend, Norm Bangeter, with whom he served in the state legislature. 
1978, both men had their sights set on the House Speaker post, but they didn't want to run against each other. So they made a deal that Norm would step aside so long as Jim agreed to step aside in the future if they were ever interested in running for the same position again. Now, Jim hoped to become governor of Utah. In the 1980s, after Jim had been serving in the House of Representatives for a few years, there was an opening for a Republican to take back the governorship. And everyone expected Jim to make a play for it. Except Norm wanted to run. So what did Jim do? Well, he stepped aside, allowing his friend to run for and eventually win that position, a position that Norm Bangator then held for eight years. That was the caliber of Jim Hansen's character. He was a man of humility and integrity who honored his word and always put others before himself. I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention Jim's piety in the truest, purest sense of that word. In addition to having a deep loyalty to his country and to his state, he had a deep loyalty to his family and his church. Jim married Ann Burgoyne in 1958, which he considered wisely to be the smartest choice he ever made. Their family grew to include five children and eventually 14 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Grandpa Jim was the center of their family, and his love for them animated so much of his life. His grandchildren fondly remember his jokes, stories, and genuine, unmistakable zest for life. His granddaughter, Anna, recounted that on Jim's 80th birthday, when he insisted on going water skiing, he had waded into the lake wearing his slacks and socks with his grandchildren sloshing behind him to fish out the chapstick tubes and tic-tac packs that were floating out of his pockets. But that, of course, was Jim Hansen, full of life and spirit until the very end. Before his involvement in politics and after he served in the Navy during the Korean War, Jim went on a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for two years. He also served as the Bishop of the Farmington Second Ward and as the President of the Davis Stake. One of his jobs as Bishop was to supervise the construction of the Farmington South Stake Center, where loved ones and dignitaries gathered to honor his life just this past week. It is only fitting that we pay tribute to this honorable man who so faithfully and nobly served God, family, and country throughout his entire life. Jim Hansen will be sorely missed by his family, friends, and Utahns, and all those whose lives were touched and changed for the better by him. But I have no doubt that his legacy will live on for many years to come. Thank you, Mr. President.